I am in Stourport on Severn. Well, how did I get here? Sounds like a song. I left Market Drayton at the end of the November lockdown, which, incidentally, really did my head in. Heading south for Orverley Junction and the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal. Turning left would take me to Stafford, Tixelwide and Great Haywood, so I'd turn to starboard. Nice to see a working boat winding at the junction behind me. Now I'd heard several good reports about this part of the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, from the beauty of the scenery to the industrial heritage. Time to see what all the fuss was about. This part of the canal skirts around to the north and the west of Wolverhampton, Adderley Junction and the main line to Birmingham. From Alderley to the Severn, the canal drops over 300 feet through 29 locks in a space of about 25 miles. For football fans, this is Wolverhampton Wanderers training ground on the left. Compton Lock was the first lock to be built on this canal and it was started in 1760. Amazing to think that the rack and pinion gear, which I suspect is original, is still in working order 260 years later. I'm always a bit wary of locks on different canals as they all seem to behave slightly differently. These locks drop the boat so gently and when the water level at the bottom was equalised the boat was gently eased away from the gates. No need for me to be hauling on ropes at all. A stately lock experience. End of the day and time to tie up. An offer of help through Dimmingsdale Lock. Wish I hadn't declined it, as it turned out she was an experienced boater. I left the gates open for the oncoming boat. Approaching the Bratch. Not a staircase lock exactly, as there are extremely short pounds between the gates. The locks are manned by lockies during the summer, so I had to read the operating instructions carefully before proceeding down the three locks. The paddles are all colour coded in red and blue, so you know which order to open and close them. I'd photographed the instructions on my phone, so I'm just double checking the order for opening and closing the paddles. Another offer of help, which I again declined, and I know she was trying to be helpful, but I found the chat quite distracting whilst trying to negotiate a lock system I was unfamiliar with. <laughs> and more gongoozlers watch the process.
queue. Finally done. Now you might be forgiven for thinking that this is a castle, or a baronial hall, or somebody's house perhaps. But no, this is actually a pumping station. I just love the way the Victorians spent so much time and effort and money building extraordinary utilitarian buildings like this. I mean, if a building, if a pumping station was built today, it wouldn't be built to look quite so ornate, would it? It's just a fabulous piece of architecture. It's got absolutely nothing to do with the canal, but it is adjacent to the canal. And um, I just think it's a rather amazing piece of architecture. If you're, up in, if you're passing through Bratchlocks, just pop down and have a look. It's brilliant. After descending another staircase, I decided to moor for the night, just before Swindon. The following morning, it appeared that my gas had run out. So, I went to change the bottle, and found that the taps on both the bottles were closed. Now, I can only assume that someone had been on board and thought it a jolly wheeze to mess around with my gas bottles. I must admit, I had so far been wondering what all the fuss was about with what had appeared so far to be a fairly ordinary canal. But, by Green's Forge, the scenery and the buildings were beginning to become more interesting. The canal between here and Kidderminster will test your helming as it's incredibly windy with very sharp bends. My first sight of the River Stour. The Stourbridge Canal on the left and the setting sun means it's time to find somewhere to moor up for the night. I was rather worried that this guy was going to fall in front of my boat. The wonderfully named Stew Pony. Note the toll house to the left of Stew Pony Lock.
The cruise between Stew Pony and Kinver that morning had been stunning. I topped up with water at Kinver Services and was on my way again. The early mist had lifted, leaving crisp December sunshine. Luckily for me, a holiday boat from Stourport was coming up the lock. Through Whittington Lock and out into the open countryside again, where some cows were taken by surprise to see a boat moving. God, the jokes haven't got any better, have they? The russet bracken and the red sandstone were a delight in the low raking sun. Another holiday boat, this one giving me a rather wide berth. My steering isn't that bad, surely. Gone goozled by geese and ducks, and then into the Cookley Tunnel. It has to be said, Debdo Lock caused me a few problems. It is set on an extremely tight bend and the gate pedal mechanism was pretty tight. But once done, all there was to do was wait. And wait. And then bounce my way into the lock. If you look to the left by the lock ladder, you can see a cave. This, allegedly, was carved out to stable horses. It can't have been easy getting a horse into there. I moored near Wolverley, and it chucked it down for two days solid, so I stayed put. I was happy to set off again on another startlingly beautiful morning. That's Kidderminster in the distance. The view at Kidderminster Lock is OK, unless of course you turn around. Under the dual carriageway and we begin to see some of the town's canal side industrial heritage. Slingfield Mill was built in 1864, where they spun the finest yarns for the carpet industry. The machinery was powered by steam engines, which were operated from the adjacent boiler house with the square chimney. Kidderminster is famous for three things. The carpet industry, the invention and the use of the first postage stamp, and, most importantly, 
Robert Plant, the Led Zeppelin vocalist. Now, these three swans thought they'd have a bit of fun with the swan's neck playing catch us if you can. Here they are again. And again. I'll chase these under the bridge. This young'un obviously isn't as confident at takeoff as the other two, but I'm giving her some good practice. At last, they're gone. So yeah, Pratt's Wharf on the left, it was, uh, the wharf building was, was just in front of that bridge as we approached it. If you went under the bridge, uh, there used to be a lock which took the canal down onto the River Stour. And um, the reason for that was that there was uh, a really important ironworks down on the river. So it was important to be able to uh, take things down to the ironworks and presumably to um, bring finished products back. Entering Stourport now, I guess this was once a wharf building. Very handsome it is too. Lovely proportions. And its own mooring with a very smart Dutch barge. The railway basin on the right where cargo and possibly passengers were loaded on and off of trains. There are plenty of visitor moorings throughout the town. Five days here. Another handsome wharf building. You can tell we're entering what was once a very important uh, canal town by the number of canal side pubs and warehouses there are. It's uh, really quite impressive so far. York Street moorings on the left, and private moorings on the right. Approaching the 12 foot York Street lock, which takes you down into the Stourport basins. Lime Kiln Chandlery is on the right and the services are on the left. There's only space for two visitor moorings in the basins and, luckily for me, one of them is vacant. I'll be taking you on a tour of the basins in a future episode. As usual, 
I'd be grateful if you could give me the thumbs up, but better still if you subscribe. And you can follow me on Instagram. Catch you next time.